Hi, Taurus. Welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is for the Taurus men. I just finished the Taurus women's reading for May 15th to the 21st. This is for the Taurus men. <clears throat> for May 15th to the 21st. In Love and Romance, Spirit Guides, can we please get a reading for Love and Romance for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus men, Taurus men, for May 15th to the 21st. What's going on with Taurus? <clears throat> for those who need to hear the messages, who want to hear the messages, for the Taurus men, May 15th to the 21st. What does the Taurian men, what do, what do the Taurian men need to hear? For May 15th to the 21st, what messages are there in love and romance, please? Thank you so much. What messages are for the Taurus man, for the Taurus man? We did the Taurus females already. Let's get the Taurus men. What does the Taurus man need to hear? For May 15th to the 21st. What does the Taurus man need to hear? We're going to pull cards from tarot and then I'll pull some love oracle cards. Maybe some spirit decks. One or two. <clears throat> or one. What messages are there for the Taurus man, please? What messages are there for the Taurus man for May 15th? There we go. Starting with, yay, look at you, magician. Someone's a player. Someone is putting, oh my. Oh, forget the player. Forget the player. Ten of cups? What? Completion. Queen of cups? Holy moly. Okay, so... Ten of Wands, Burdens, Fool, Taking the Leap. Like, it's a lot, but you met somebody. Taurus. The Magician has all these different kind of energies to the Magician. They have all the tools to manifest in love and romance. Now, you just decide, like, how does somebody who's got all that going on for them, how are they going to manifest? Well, let's look at the card that was on the bottom of the deck. We got Ten of Cups. That's the happily ever after. This is this is the home, the dogs, the kids, the everything. This I love the Ten of Cups. Because it's not the Ten of Pentacles. Yes, the Ten of Pentacles is the commitment and all that stuff, but it, it indicates like other things, other people, trappings and all that kind of stuff. Ten of Cups is just pure and lovely. It's just a happily ever after. You don't give a shit about all the other stuff. You don't care what's going on. The world could be burning down. As long as you have that person with you, you are happy. You're okay. Even if you died tomorrow together, you're happy. That's the Ten of Cups. That's beautiful. And with the magician, you manifested it. And you got somebody who's the Queen of Cups, totally in love. They're totally in love, open, receptive, compassionate, spiritual, intuitive, beautiful, could be a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, doesn't have to be. Could just embody that type of Queen of Cups energy. Let's just leave her next to the Ten of Cups. They're totally in love too. My goodness, good for you. Good for you, Taurus. All right, what else do we have? Like, I don't even know what else to say, but let's just see. What else is there? What other messages are there for Taurus? The Taurus man for May 15th to the 21st. Whoa. Okay, that's about to fall. We got, you're in love. King of Cups, support. You are totally in love. You got the king and the queen. What the hell? Oh my God, Four of Swords, recuperation. Temperance, healing. See, another healing. Anxiety about distance, chariot, progress. Could be a cancer. Okay, so let's talk about this. You got the Queen of Cups and the King of Cups. This is the perfect soulmate union. This is you are you guys are both in love. You're both perfect for each other. You're both spiritual. Four of Swords recuperation is showing you are either it's a support. I'm just gonna take that. We don't have to. We can just look at the King of Cups as who the King of Cups is. Someone super wise, loving, generous, beautiful, spiritual, intuitive, healer, guru type of person. And, you know, they come up for counselors and therapists and things like that, too. So you got the, the word here says support. Support what? Somebody's healing. Four of swords, recuperating. Healing from what? A heartbreak. Three of swords. So the four of swords is where somebody has been in a period of healing from a previous relationship that didn't go as they hoped or a breakup, right? And, and you got healing here, too, with temperance. Okay, let's keep going. 
You are manifesting your happily ever after. Look at this Knight of Swords drama. And I'm going to just move these over here, okay? So let's see. Support. Knight of This is the flop, okay? So Knight of Swords, Six of Swords, Two of Wands. And on the bottom, Ace of Cups. Look at that. You want to offer your cup. Knight of Swords tells me you're watching somebody, okay? Or somebody's watching you. This is the stalker card, the, the keeping tabs, collecting information. Six of Swords is somebody moving away from a toxic situation. Two of Wands is making plans, setting plans into motion. For what? For Ace of Cups, to offer your cup. I'm getting a vibe here of you know that there's somebody who's perfect for you. You're manifesting the happily ever after with this person. They would be a perfect match for you. And it looks like somebody could be you healing from a heartbreak, right? And then this watching, watching as somebody moves away from something that wasn't working out for them and then putting plans in to offer your cup. Could be, okay? Now let's just see, how do you feel about your person? How do you feel about your person, Taurus? How do you feel about your person? Taurus, how do you feel about your person? Taurus, how do you feel about your person? Five of Cups, Grief. On the bottom, Seven of Swords, Deceit. So how do you feel about your person? Five of Cups is disappointment, right? You see, it's like a, a, a lost chance, missed opportunity. And the Seven of Swords is Deceit. It's like, it's another... Deceit, deception, how? Swords is air energy, information, speech. Either there's lies being told, um, some kind of deceit surrounding this person, okay? Or um, stealing of information, like, and, and feeling grief or disappointment about this, this energy. Let's, we'll clarify. So this is how you feel about your person, you might feel like, okay, so, okay, let me talk about Five of Cups. Five of Cups is, these are such happy cards, I don't even want to put them around this energy, but like, let's just move it like this. Five of Cups, okay, shows three cups that are spilled and two cups that are upright in the traditional tarot. And it shows that the cloaked figure, the person, has their back turned to the Two of Cups and are fixated on the Three of Cups that have spilled. So what that means is how do you see your person you see your person as someone who's completely distracted, like they're focused on something that didn't work out. And I think that's why we got this, like you're watching the Six of Swords as they walk away and move away from something toxic. The Five of Cups is showing that this you think your person is so distracted, caught up in something that didn't work out that they don't see that they have a Two of Cups with you that are that's still upright. And then the Seven of Swords is deceit, clarifying this, like they've been deceived, They've been mistreated because you got six of swords and seven of swords, right? Six of swords is you're watching somebody walk away from something that's toxic. Seven, there's deceit involved. All right. How do they feel about you? Wow. Okay. So let's talk about this. Wow. That's a lot. Okay. Eight of pentacles, perfection. Okay. So they see you as somebody that they can build with, right? They see you as somebody who they can work things out with. There is potential. They want to work it out, right? For whatever reason that things didn't work out in the past or didn't manifest in the past, they would like to, right? Eight of Pentacles. The Hierophant, Guidance. This is the card of commitment, traditions, traditional values, marriage, also ruled over by the sign of Taurus. The guru, the teacher, the healing, the faith, spirituality. Oh, look at that. The wheel of fortune, karma. It's like guidance and karma. Look, a wheel of fortune. Like some, somebody's coming back into your life. Eight of wands, speed. Things happening quickly. King of swords, knowledge. Using your knowledge, your wisdom, strategy, Maturity, truth, fairness, because the King of Swords is a very stand-up guy. He's honest. 
You know, wherever there was deceit with the person that was leaving a toxic situation, they could be so sick of the bullshit. They could be so sick of being lied to that now when they see you with like fresh eyes of like, yes, you're the magician. You've got everything that you can manifest in love and romance. But now it's like suddenly you're Superman because they're seeing clearly that it takes a man to be able to tell the truth, to say what they feel, to stand up for what they feel, to to try to be spiritual and better and heal and be a decent person. Like it's so far evolved from the fuckery of Six of Swords and Seven of Swords that this person sees it. And then what, what they're thinking, how they feel about you, look at all the wonderful, they hold you in very high regard. They think you're super spiritual, that you have guidance, wisdom, knowledge, super passionate with the eight of wands. Like you get things going and you're like, you, you, you take action. Wheel of fortune and eight of pentacles. It says karma. Wheel of fortune is also very benefic, like you're good for them. Eight of pentacles, like you'll put in the work. That, like if there's problems, eight of pentacles is putting in the extra hours and l like looking to like, looking to love, wanting to work things out, putting in the effort. That's how they see you. Like if something happens, there will be no way that there will be a misunderstanding or some kind of stupid thing that causes a big fight or an argument because you guys are going to talk it out because you're going to work it out because there's going to be communication. There's going to be truth, respect. Communication, three of wands. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly right. I, I didn't even see that. Vision, seven of pentacles. Anywho, let's have this a beautiful, beautiful reading. Taurus, good for you. All right, let's see what the love oracle has to say. This is the Romance Angels by Dorian Virtue. This is for the Taurus men. Please, Romance Angels, spirit guides, can we get some love messages for Taurus and the person for May 15th to the 21st. What does Taurus, the Taurus man, need to know for May 15th to the 21st? Unrequited love. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. And on the bottom, healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Unrequited love. So it looks like this is a thing where there's two people who are always on each other's radar. They always are playing this cat and mouse game and nothing really manifests, right? And I'll read it. It's saying, because at the heart of it, it's saying there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. And to clarify this, it's saying healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. So something to do with your upbringing or your family or your parents, your childhood has is the reasoning behind this unrequited love. Now let's read the unrequited love card. And underneath that, it says, free yourself. It, it's time to take back control of your life. Okay, so unrequited love. Let me read that. The romance angels compassionately bring you this card as an answer to your relationship question. The person you're inquiring about has many qualities that you find attractive. However, there's not enough mutual attraction to create the passion you're seeking. This relationship is more like a cat and mouse chase with one partner continually retreating and disappearing. Neither person enjoys this imbalance and lack of chemistry is the reason. You may both share genuine love, which in itself can be a foundation for a long-term relationship. This card comes to you simply to help you understand the missing component which you both can sense. Every relationship is a synergy of blended energies. You can't completely control the attraction factor, but you can override and steer it. Sometimes painful childhood experiences can draw you to unhealthy relationships as you recreate the original situation in an attempt to heal it. You can ask the angels for guidance to help you elevate your spiritual frequency so that you attract a partner of a similar nature. You deserve to be in a relationship with mutual appreciation and attraction, so it's worth your time and effort to manifest one with these qualities. I think you are, though, because this person holds you in super high regard. And how do you feel about your person? Oh, the five of five of cups and seven of swords. Maybe it's you. Let's see. How do you feel about this person? How do you feel about your person? How do you, how does Taurus feel about your person? There we go. See, it's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. 
you're holding back. And because of family issues, like there's a reason you're still single. It's saying it's because you, see, release your ex. There you go on the bottom. You're not over your ex. And it's safe for you to love and the time has come to clear your energy. How does your person feel about you? How does your person feel about you? How does Taurus's person feel about them? How does Taurus's person feel about them? How does Taurus's per Okay. Pa past life relationship. You've known each other before. Getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So this is how they feel about you. Like, they feel there's a real strong connection because it's a past life connection. You've known each other before. And in this life, they feel like it's an eight of pentacles, right? Wanting to look to like, look to love. They're wanting, they think highly of you and they want to get to know you better. And the bond deepens as you do that. I feel like the unrequited love thing, it's, I don't think that's true. Let's clarify the unrequited love. Let's clarify the unrequited love. It might, you might feel like that might have happened in the past, which is why there's a five of cups or disappointment. But you have deceit on that. So let's see. There we go. Finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. So maybe finances was the issue. Look, give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. Unrequited love. One, there we go. Pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Playfulness. Okay, so you're dealing with somebody right now. It's saying with pay attention to the red flags and finances, you're worried that somebody uh, is using you or wants to use you. Because pay attention to the red flags is all about there's a person that you're dating and how they treat you versus how they treat the chauffeur or the wait staff or whatever. And to take a good look at that because the face they show you is different from the face they show other people. And that's like a red flag, right? And it says here with this card that it's not necessarily a deal breaker. It could be that they're young. They don't have life experience. So, you know, they get carried away or they're putting on airs or they let things get to their head. Maybe they just need to live a little bit more, have some more life experience to be a little bit more humble. But it's saying you can work through that with this person. So it gives a vibe though of someone younger, okay? And there's playfulness and then you make sense of this how you will. This is quite complicated. Because like I said, the magician, they are the, the if you want to look at a player, Okay, there's King of Wands, Knight of Wands, and the Magician. They can manifest anything, but you're manifesting your Ten of Cups, the happily ever after. I don't even know if you know it. Because <laughs> there's a lot, like your mental state of what you think of your person, Five of Cups and Seven of Swords. Let's clarify one more time. I'm going to clarify one more time. Because it's so... It's like somebody was a disappointment. Okay, I told you the five of cups. Let me find a five of cups. Let me find a five of cups in the traditional tarot. It's the, You got two things going at once with five of cups. Something that's spilt. Okay, so let me show you. This is two of cups, okay? And then we have... I'm um, still going... Still going. Looking for the cups. I'm still going. Of course, they must be at the, all the way at the other end. Okay, so five of cups. And three of cups. So let's, let's just look at that for a second. This is five of cups, what you got. Okay? So on one side, you've got the two of cups, which is this, a partnership union. On the other side, you've got this, three of cups, right? What does this mean? It means you could be in a union right now and still fixated on something from your past, the three of cups. 
Three of Cups is celebratory. It's a card for dating, the single life, your past relationship, all like all of those things. It could be something very celebratory and celebratory and fun and enjoyable, good times. And you are turning your back to the relationship that you are in, this whatever that you're in. Why? Because you see red flags, you know, it's like kind of feels unrequited, like finances being a factor. You're wondering if you're getting used. You're wondering if the person's really a good person, like that kind of stuff. But there's also something else that you're looking at from your past, something that made you happy. And so you got these two different stories of manifesting your happily ever after meanwhile you're like literally in the now dealing with something that you have your doubts about right okay so let's pull a journey of love oracle card from Elena Fairchild and that will give you a real nice um I love this card okay last card please a real nice message with a poem okay so that's very on point Spirit guides, can we get a beautiful, wonderful, straight to the point, helpful message for Taurus, for the Taurus men, for May 15th to the 21st. What do the, there we go. Thank you so much. Soft. 47. Oh, that's so lovely. Let's cover up the five of cups. And spir spiral dance of the goddess. I read both, the top and the bottom. I find that like sometimes the bottom is even more um, significant than the top. Oh my God, I just opened the page to this. I just flipped it, just went and right to it. Okay, anyways, so you know it's meant to be. 47 Soft, a sanctuary bathed in soft light. Your heart is receptive, inviting and gentle. It brings strength to the weary, comfort to the lonely, and healing to the wounded. It is a magnet for all that is needed, for you, your beloveds, your world. Don't imagine you must always be the fighter, going against the part of your nature that longs for harmony and peace. This is your time to be soft, to surrender, to let the subtle waves of the heart invite love in and to receive. In doing so, you will give so much. This oracle brings you a message of peace. Surrender now, be soft, even just for this moment of quiet reflection. You have perhaps been working too hard at growing and living. Take some moments to replenish and allow the divine to help you, dear one. Be soft so you are receptive to the divine. It is when we let go that we truly perceive the obstacles that lie between us and oneness with the divine lover. Let go and perceive that the divine lover is already awakening in your heart. And then the poem says, You are the softness he desires. You help light his way. You nurture all that he holds dear. Though tempest clouds dismay, and in the quiet of the storm, his gentleness comes through, and in the shelter of his arms, his heart is there for you. Well, that's lovely. And the candle just went out. Do I have another one here? It's upstairs. So we're just going to read the other one. 29. <clears throat> From a point of light unfolding, we become a soul, then incarnate into a sacred body and our lives become a work of divine art, a speck of heavenly presence manifesting itself through dimensions of time and space and into a life on earth made manifest. The extraordinary fact of your existence is a divine happening. As though the light of the moon is dancing not only upon the water but inside of it, your ancient light is dipping into the mud of the earth. This is how the soul becomes a divine human in the making. As you sense yourself moving and shifting from light to dark and back again, from knowing to unknowing, you are weaving your consciousness, your divinity, into sacred expression, manifesting your soul essence into the form of your life, threading the light through the darkness without even realizing you are doing it. You are gently impregnating the matter of your body, of your life, with light. Your body and your life become luminous radiant and you assist others even just through your presence it sounds wonderful and it is yet it is not always an easy path as the light travails through darkness pain and suffering can arise in waves best to be present to it trust that it is not a permanent condition and wait for the spiral to twist from dark to light again always moving closer and closer to the purity of the center and expanding outward eternally as though you are being inhaled by the divine 
filling cosmic lungs as they reach far and wide, taking in all of life. The message of this oracle to you is that you are growing. You are bringing more of your light into form. You may be meeting obstacles in yourself and in the world, but this is because you are bringing through the light. If there were nothing happening, there would be no obstacle. Bless them as signs that you are proceeding and empower them no more. You shall be. All else is just divine timing. And then the poem is very short. It says, The inner movement in expressive flow, an outward breath of dance and light, becoming one, becoming free. Okay, so I'm going to end this reading with the African Goddess Rising deck by Abiola Abrams. So this will be the spirit message. Final message, spirit guides, goddesses, could we please get a card for Taurus, for the Taurus man, for this reading? What does the Taurus man need to hear for the highest good for May 15th to the 21st? What message is there for Taurus, for the Taurus man, for May 15th to the 21st? Whoa, whoa, look, see, they love you. They, they just wanted to, that's a lot. Jumbie, masks. I'm going to show them to you, and then I'm going to shuffle again. Oh my God, this is so funny. Okay, so we got Katesh, Sacred Lust. This is one of the reasons why I stopped using this deck because, and I said it in the Taurus reading, I was in a major hermit mode and looking at these cards, and I was very spiritual, I always am. When I would see cards like this, like sex magic or like sex will, you know, make everything better and fix you and bring you into spiritual awareness and evolution, I'd be like, please, this this this, this doesn't resonate with me. And then I put it away, even though I loved this deck and I used it like crazy. Having said that, I was wrong. <laughs> I was totally wrong. It, it's it's so on point. Okay, so Sacred Lust. Yes, see ye live out loud. Queen Nefertiti, alchemy. Mama Jam, Mom Lambo, self-sabotage. Abel Nimba, harvest. On the bottom, we've got Marie Laveau, good juju. And she is the inspiration, I think, for this deck. She was uh, like a voodoo kind of person in New Orleans, New Orleans, and she was famous for um, being like a super great healer, reader, spiritual person. Okay, I'm summarizing. But let's go again one more time. Can we get one card for the Taurus man from May 15th to the 21st? Or whatever Taurus really needs to hear. Otherwise, we'll be here for quite a while. And you can just Google those cards. If there's a card that resonates for you, you Google it and the, the Oracle card message is online. That's why I like to just show you guys instead of putting it away right away. Um, final message, please. Spiritual guidance for the Taurus. Look, you got masks again. You see, you can't fake this stuff. You got it twice, right? And you got, they're like, no. We need to give these. So here it is. Satira Brazen. I'll tell you right now, Goddess Satira, she's saying, live out loud. Do you, this is this is this is sexual. This is like no apologies. This is do you live out loud, live proud, enjoy, enjoy your body, enjoy living, you know, out of the norm whatever it gives a very wild and brazen feeling and then we've got nunde truth i believe this one was about this goddess who she had a husband who had like several wives and he still had a roaming eye and so she took a lover and had a great time something along those lines but i'll read more and sarah lakali she's amazing divine lineage in, in another deck is a queen of the outsiders. So Sarah, look, I'll, I'll read all three because that's what they want. And Inko Zazana, Celestial Alignment. She's amazing. She came up a lot when I first got this deck. Major energy with this deck of like enlightened energy. She, she really is a light worker. Super high vibes. Wanting to bring joy and light to everyone. So I'm going to put her out too. I get caught up. I love them. All right, but you know you got this twice. So let's put Jumbi masks right here. And I'm going to have to share some of these stands with these two. Brazen and Nunde. 
okay like that and then we'll do this is how OCD I get where I want to make sure they all get the same stand all right is there space here okay so let's do th this and can you see like me like this and like this and we'll put like that and then I have to check the camera to see if you can see Jumbi Moses I think you can all right <clears throat> It's going to take a while if you want just fast forward to the goddess that you resonate with but i'm going to read this one for sure because i'm going to read all of them but it just it just opened on brazen satira brazen <sighs> okay for some reason i opened it on brazen so i'm going to read satira brazen first right here that's this goddess right here it says uh, she's goddess of brazenness from Guyana, temple, warriors, element, fire. So that's Satira Brazen. Goddess Satira is the energy and spirit of Buxton in Guyana, South America. Satira is brave, bold, brazen, and barefaced, casting a spell with her hips. Satira's guidance, step up, go for it. Partner with the divine to make brazen choices, and everything meant to diminish you will elevate you. All who mean you harm fall away. Your hurdles are illusions because you are plugged into the source. Embodiment. Make the brazen decision. What would you dare to do if you knew you couldn't fail? It is brazen to be unapologetically you. It is brazen to speak up for someone not in the room. It is brazen to choose a different spiritual path or career than your community. It is brazen to build your family your way. Goddess God, goddess, force, energy is brazen. Goddess declaration, I am bold, brave, shameless, and brazen. All right, now we'll go on to 18, which is the one that we got twice, Jumbi. Shadow of masks, Caribbean, temple shadows, element, air. Jumbies are the scary, shadowy, otherworldly spirits and monsters of the Caribbean. Jumbies shadow guidance. Where is the lie? Get quiet to get clear. Put your hand on your heart. Now, are you confused or are you afraid? Your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. Embodiment. Show your true face. Wearing a mask blocks your vulnerability and blessings. If you are wearing a mask, dare to reveal yourself. You are lying to others and to yourself. Wearing a mask is exhausting you. Be you. If someone else is wearing a mask with you, you deserve, you deserve clarity. Your relationship and connection is built on lies. Their mask is a projection of your own. Goddess declaration, I am willing to remove the mask. Okay, so you got that twice. Now let's read 34, which is Nunde. Goddess of Truth from Benin. Temple Griots. This is this goddess right here. Uh, element water. Nunde, the bold, outspoken wife of Benin Iwa deity Legba, was de feeling neglected by her husband. Even with several wives, his head easily turned, so Nunde lived her truth, took her own lover, and became her own best friend. Nunde's guidance get real. What is your truth? Truth telling matters. Being able to hear the truth matters just as much. Embodiment. Tell the truth. Each person has their own version. Speak yours. Words have impact. Remember that we all have triggers. Think before you speak and listen with compassion. Be gentle and stay calm in truth-telling conversations. Goddess Declaration. The truth is my friend. Now let's go to these two goddesses. Inko Sazan or Inko Sanzana, uh, 41. 41, and she is the goddess of celestial alignment uh, from Zulu, South Africa. Temple high priestesses, element is water. Inko Sazana is the healer of healers and the teacher of teachers, whose love for humanity makes the corn grow. She dwells in foamy waters, but is known as the heavenly princess. As above, so below is celestial alignment. Inko Sazana's guidance. Your natural path is to be in alignment with your own divinity. No one can take from you what they didn't give you. Embodiment. How do you want to feel? You think often about what you want, but goddess energy speaks to us in feelings. 
Celestial alignment is being in sync with the energetic feeling, the frequency of the sacred. Everything that you desire is in that frequency. Match it with your feelings. This, that is the God-Goddess energy. And the Goddess Declaration says, I am always being guided in the right direction. Finally, we have Sarah Lakali, which is number... That's uh, being blocked, so let me see. Look it up. 12. Number 6, but page 12. All right. So Sarah Lakali is here, and she's from um, goddess, the goddess of divine lineage, Romani, and slash Egypt. Temple ancestors, element is water again. Great ancestress Sarah Lakali, meaning Sarah the Black, was an Egyptian prophetess and the patron saint of the Romani people. Oral history says that Saint Sarah had the highest divine lineage. Sarah Lakali's guidance, your ancestors protect the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is you. Divine ones walk beside and within you. Trust. Embodiment, your ancestors want to remind you that you are not alone. They are rooting for you. They ask you to honor your spirit guides. I just got a notification on my phone right now. They ask you to honor your spirit guides and call upon the power of the divine. Here we go again. Create or nourish your ancestral altar or shrine. Unbury your ancestors. Speak their names. Your divine lineage ancestors may be blood related or culturally or spiritually connected. Goddess declaration. I am my sister and my sister is me. And you know, I wanted to do one more card. If you have the time, I'm going to finish it with the um, Wild Kuan Yin. Because I did that for Taurus too. Because you're so spiritual, I just want to do this one as well. Thank you so much, African Goddesses. That's beautiful. Put that there. This is the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle by Alana Fairchild. Final card. Spirit guys, can we get a final card for Taurus? For the Taurus man. Can we get a final card for the Taurus man? What do they need to know for their highest good? One final card for Taurus. One final card for Taurus. For the Taurus man. What do they need to know, please? What message is there for the Taurus man? What final card is there? For there we go. Play with me. Sweet. All right. On the bottom, it's Harvest Mother Watches Over Me. And if you just Google these cards, you can get the meaning. Um... For the oracle card, it's just, they're so long that I don't want to make everybody wait. So 15, play with me. Taurus got this too. Taurus females. All right. There is a more joyful way for you to be yourself in the world. To access that, you will need to let go of the struggles you have endured and your past suffering. You do not have to deny what you've been through, nor do you need to ignore your feelings, but you do need to be willing to put it behind you now. You will not lose anything through doing this except your pain. It has served a purpose. Now it is time for another way. It is time for play. Guidance. Play. If experience with presence and awareness can deeply sorry be deeply healing to mind body and soul it's a way to build energy and attract what we want into our lives too have you ever seen a person smile when doing something they love they are absolutely beautiful so attractive in their joy that joyful energy is highly magnetic it attracts you to whatever you need to help you experience even more joy in your life like attracts like you have that joyful relaxed and attractive energy within you it is time to tune into it again and allow it to heal you and transform your world you will allow the you will know when you are in an aware present state of playfulness because ugh, i can't talk because you will feel a sense of well-being relaxation openness and trust You'll probably also feel spontaneous and cheeky in a good way. This will feel better than constantly striving and enduring life as though it were a marathon. There will be times when your ability to endure will be required to go get you through a challenge, but living your life as though it were a constant challenge with no time out for play will drain your vitality and lightness of heart. This more joyful and open way of life is what you deserve. Will you allow yourself to relax and receive? Otherwise, it shall be a little like the Divine Mother standing at your front door, beckoning you to come outside and enjoy a game, whilst you try to ignore her because you have too much work to do. There are many good things that she wants to bring into your world. Why not allow her to do so, whilst having some more fun in your life? In a reading, if you have been considering taking up a course, exploring your creativity, learning to dance, or any activity that interests you but is not immediately obvious as a serious pursuit, then you are encouraged to go for it. 
Are you feeling in need of a break from the slog and seriousness? The Divine Mother agrees. It is time to lighten up in body, mind, and soul. Can you let the weight of past pain leave your heart and mind? If you believe that choosing to let go of your attachment to past pain and all that you've endured means you will have suffered for nothing, you're being asked to see things another way now. You've learned from those experiences. You have always done your best and have lived the best way you could. Now there is another way for you to learn and live. That is all. There is no denial of the value of all that has gone on in your life, just an opportunity to consider opening up to the new way being presented to you. And then there's a healing process. It says a prayer that you can say aloud. Kuan Yin, who loves me unconditionally, help me let go of the fear, guilt, or shame that would prevent me from being able to play, to have fun, to trust in life, and to let go and experience all of what is being offered to me. Help me find the balance between work and play so I may more easily receive your grace and grow upon my life path to experience more happiness, fulfillment, and joy through your divine grace, mercy, and protection. So be it. Then it says you've completed your healing process, especially if you now go and play, exclamation point. All right, that was long-winded, I know, but that was the messages from spirit and you are a very spiritual person and you got this card twice with the mask, with the jumbi and uh, it's, it's, it, you've got two things going on in love and romance and it's saying that to be open and receptive and to let go of your ex. All right, that is it. Have a great week. I'll be back with your June readings. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye for now.